Welcome to our Sunday morning service from St. Mary Magdalene, Liminster. 2020 is proving to be a difficult year. Here we are in the second lockdown. People are unable to visit their families, people in hospital, friends, family, in care homes. Others have lost their livelihoods or find themselves on a reduced income. And many of us, have found ourselves asking the question that almost Jesus himself asked on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where is God in the midst of this pandemic? Why does a loving God allow suffering? That's the question we're going to look at in our sermon this morning. But we discover in the scriptures that while the psalmist and other Christians down the years have found the freedom to tell God exactly how they're feeling. Nonetheless, whatever it is that they've been suffering, inspired by God's Holy Spirit, remembering what God has done for us, they've also found the ability to be able to praise and to worship. And that's how this morning's service will start, in praise and worship of God. you. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to God conscious of our failings and our shortcomings, but remembering as well that St. John wrote, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And so in a moment's silence, let us call to mind our sins. And we confess them together saying, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with penitence and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the last Sunday before Advent, which nowadays is known as the Feast of Christ the King. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of love, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's Gospel is written in Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And the king will answer them, Truly, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then also they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? And he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And those will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, give us minds and hearts willing to listen to what you want to say to us this morning. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Today is the last Sunday before Advent, which nowadays is known as the Feast of Christ the King, when we call to mind the just and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, our Sovereign and what it means for us to be members of his kingdom. Jesus as king, Jesus as sovereign, crowning the close of the year. 
But I think all of us would admit that in one way or another, 2020 has been a mess. For many, it's been more than that. It's been a very sad and a very lonely year. I talked this week to a young man who's unable to visit his father in hospital at the moment because of the COVID-19 restrictions. His father is very seriously ill. I listened on the radio to men and women describing how their wives and husbands, already suffering from the distress of dementia because of COVID restrictions, have been confined to their rooms now for weeks on end. Situations where protection has become virtual imprisonment. And I think all of us, if we're being honest, if we haven't become very hard-hearted, have asked ourselves at one time or another, where is God in all of this? We've asked ourselves the questions, why Lord, why? Where are you in the pandemic? These are serious questions and they deserve serious answers. But serious answers are also complex answers. And for that reason, I'm only going to be able to touch on one possible response in this sermon. But we need to decide where to start. We could, of course, start looking to philosophy for the answers, as many people have done. Now, I happen to love philosophy. I read it at university. But I have to admit as well that it's theoretical. And if we were thinking the philosophically, then one of the first things we'd have to do would, was, would be to admit that the very question, where is God in all of this, actually assumes a large number of things. It assumes, for instance, that there are rational answers to our questions. Numerous people have pointed out that until the 18th century, no one would really have thought like this. What happened in and around the 18th century was that some people began to argue that it was reason and science alone that could give a reliable source of human knowledge. And therefore, they argued, Christianity was false. And in response, other Christians responded, no, nonsense. We'll show you how rational, how completely rational Christianity is. But what if that's to make a very serious mistake? What if that's to fall into an 18th century trap? What if science and rational thought alone not only don't have the answers, but can never have the answers? It's all very theoretical, as I said. Maybe there's somewhere else we could go to look as well. As Christians, we could, of course, look to the Bible. That's what Christians have done down the centuries, and it's what I want to do in part this morning. We could look at the way in which the Bible approaches these questions. Where is God in the suffering? And if we look to the New Testament, what would we find? We would find Jesus and how he responds to the suffering around him. And we'd also find the way in which early Christians responded to the suffering that they saw in the world around them. So let's look at Jesus first. And if we look at Jesus and how he responded to the suffering he saw around him, the suffering he met with, we find him in tears. Tom read our Old Testament lesson this morning, Psalm 130. It's a psalm of lament. Out of the depth do I cry to you, O Lord. A psalm full of grief, of suffering, of loss. There are words of hope in there, but as we listen to the psalm, we cannot but feel that the psalmist is, as it were, clinging to heaven by his very fingertips. He's somewhere really very dark. One of the most striking episodes in the New Testament is Jesus and how he approaches the death of Lazarus, his friend. You'll remember the story. Lazarus dies and then Jesus travels down to Bethany to see Martha and Mary. And when he gets there, what happens? Well, he's met with anger and disappointment and resentment. Where have you been? Why have you taken so long? 
If you'd been here, Lazarus would not have died. Very understandable reactions. And what does Jesus himself do? Well, Jesus weeps. In John 11, we find Jesus crying at the grave of his friend. Real tears. Real tears of loss and of desolation. Tears at the death of his friend. Tears for the grief of Martha and Mary. Tears for all that death can do to the world. The misery of death. And here we see the King of Kings, the eternal word made flesh, the one who made the lame walk and the blind see, weeping. As Tom Wright puts it in his new book, God and the Pandemic, this completely redefines for us what it means to say that God is in control. God made man in Jesus, weeps. And St Paul takes up a very similar theme in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Now chapter 8 is quite understandably often read at funerals. It ends on the most wonderful note of praise and trust. That nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. But before that, in verse 20, 22, Paul describes the world and describes Christians, in other words, us, as groaning along with the world's sufferings, sharing in the misery and the despair we see around us. And Paul does something more. He even describes the Spirit of God as groaning inwardly, lost for words, in the sight of suffering in the world. That is the most extraordinary thing to write. We expect God to be in charge, and according to the scriptures, indeed he is. But where do we find him? In Jesus, weeping by the tomb of his friend. Jesus, in agony, hanging on a cross. The Spirit of God himself, groaning in the sight of the world's suffering and despair. So where is God in this pandemic? according to the New Testament, weeping along with his people. But we could also look at the way in which the early Christians in the Acts of the Apostles and in the Epistles reacted to the suffering and the grief and the loss and the despair they saw around them. And what do we find there? We find that those first early Christians looked back at Jesus' life and Jesus' teaching they looked at his death and his resurrection, and they saw something new and something wonderful. They saw the kingdom of God breaking in. They saw the King of Kings in agony, but realized that through this anguish, through this grief, something new was happening. People were forgiven, the hungry were fed, the lame walked, the dead were raised to life. Yes, there was some suffering, but something else was happening. It's a little bit like that episode in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, if you've read it, when the White Witch finds that her power has been broken and the long winter is over and the snow begins to melt and spring comes. Something new, something thrilling is on the move. And for those early Christians, their reaction to the suffering they saw in the world around them, suffering they often shared with, was very practical. They wanted to follow Jesus' example in the face of suffering and they cared. And so they took that gospel reading we've just heard from Matthew 25 very seriously. They visited the sick, they buried the dead, they fed the hungry, they visited prison, people in prisons. They even cared after the slaves who were down in the mines and in the quarries, people who had been sentenced, as it were, to a living death. They cared for the dying and they buried them. And the ancient world around the Christians was completely astonished. They asked them, why on earth are you bothering? And then in Acts 11, we read of Christians in Antioch hearing that a famine was coming. What did they do? Well, they were intensely practical. 
they got themselves organised and they organised a collection. And they sent that collection to poorer Christians in Jerusalem. They asked what they can do, what can we do? And they then asked, whom can we send? If we look to the New Testament and to the behaviour of those early Christians, we find them responding to the grief and the suffering of the world around them with very practical action. We look at the New Testament and we find the tears of God and the trusting of Christians as they got on with their tasks. I know that this response leaves many unanswered questions, but it also refocuses us. Where is God in this pandemic? In part, the answer is weeping with his world, sharing its pain. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, we pray each week. And today, the feast of Christ the King. I suggest that we go back to that gospel reading and we commit ourselves afresh to loving others as Christ has loved us. I was hungry, he said, and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you came to me. We trust that God, through his spirit, will work through us. And as we respond to those around us who need our help, those who are weeping, those who are in despair, we pray that God will work through us and bring his kingdom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray each day, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the willingness to be the servants who trust in you, who see your tears and respond likewise. We ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. We pray for the church and for the world, and give thanks to God for all his goodness. And we're using the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen your church to show forth your love in today's world, especially now, as so many are fearful for the effects of this pandemic. Especially, we pray for the elderly and vulnerable, those still shielding, May we all shine your comfort and love to them and to all our families, friends and neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, when many are suffering, we pray that you will draw near and comfort those who are sick and suffering. Hear our prayer for Tina Ward, Audrey Hall, Alan and Muriel Burnett, John and Yvonne Dean. We pray that for those in care homes, including Rosemary Colwell, may those who care for them bring something of your comfort and love. And we pray too for those who are in the midst of treatment at present, especially Tracy Ceccarelli, Sandy Raywood, Peter Algar, Fiona Flett and Darren Murray. Be with the doctors and nurses who care for them, especially Ray and Anne of our congregation. May they bring your healing hand and love to them all. Minister your grace, mercy and healing to all these and to each of us and to all those we hold before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us to be a faithful witness to the gospel in the world that cries out amidst the suffering for real meaning and lasting purpose. Grant your grace to all who preach and teach the faith. We pray especially for Tom, Vanessa and Mark, that they would be 
your faithful stewards of your world and minister your grace and your hope to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son called us to suffer alongside those who are suffering. Teach us to live as members of one family, united in faith and love. Help us to look out for the needs of others. So we lift to you the homeless and hungry in our community. We pray especially for Anthony, who had been sleeping rough in the church porch, that his hostel stay in Butlins will lift him from his troubles. Strengthen too those who work with turning tides and food bank. And we praise you that CAP, the Christians Against Poverty office, has reopened in Littlehampton. May all these bring your comfort and care to many. And we pray too for those suffering in Ford Prison. Be with those who minister them, especially the chaplains and the prison fellowship team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining in the fellowship with Mary Magdalene and all your saints, we thank you for those recently departed this life and all those who've gone before us in the faith. Thank you for the hope of heaven they gave us. Help us to pass on this hope to others as we seek to help them in their suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we conclude our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We greet one another with the words of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now we come to the great prayer of thanksgiving as we remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice made for us, how God joins with us in our suffering. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. And so we proclaim, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in remembrance of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us to pray, so we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ though we are many we are one body because we all share in one bread. And from the Book of Common Prayer, we say together, we do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. And a prayer for those of you at home. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are present now by your Spirit. Since I cannot receive the bread and the wine, I pray that you will come into my heart. Let nothing ever separate me from you. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>